Uh, so let me take this opportunity by thanking Dr. Mayur Agarwal's very kind invitation for this wonderful program. And I'm going to talk about just some cases which illustrate clinical impact of CGMS. I always like to call CGMS as the moving selfie of blood glucose levels because it can predict a high low glucose as shown here. It can predict a high glucose. It can give you lots of information and it can give it to you on a reader, a phone, a watch, or on several uh, other media. So this is a 64-year-old gentleman, hypertensive, asymptomatic ischemic heart disease, has type 2 diabetes for 27 years with severe peripheral proliferative retinopathy, has been on insulin for nine years, and has been on Dexcom glucose monitor for the last four years. His fasting levels are all between 98 to 140. The postprandial levels are between 140 to 180. And the HP1C is 8.2%. So you can see the fasting isn't very high. The postprandial isn't very high, but the HP1C is certainly <coughs> very high. So this was his data in uh, 2017. Uh, you can see the uh, blood glucose levels. Uh, within the green color shows the timing range. For this patient, I had set the timing range is between 80 to 130. Each color of the uh, uh, graph is for a particular day. For example, the red is for Sunday, yellow is for Monday, uh, orange is for Tuesday, so on and so forth. You can see that just on one day, on Sunday morning, he has a hypoglycemia, but otherwise he doesn't really have hypoglycemia. But what is apparent is that on regular insulin and degludec, you can see that his post-breakfast levels are high, post-lunch levels are higher, and there is a lot of variability that sets in by evening. So this particular gentleman, I stopped the regular insulin and I added Lyspro. And uh, what you can see is that if you see the previous reading and look at this reading, what is immediately apparent is that most of the glucose levels have come into range. In fact, the variability is much better than before. You don't even have to look at the time and range to see these values. These values show that the glucose variability has come down, but at the cost of a little bit of hypoglycemia, and this is the beauty of continuous glucose monitor because it can give you uh, uh, data that directly show you the benefit. Now, we all know that type 1 diabetes shouldn't be treated with premix. But this was a patient who visited our hospital for the first time and he was on premix insulin and refused to change. And when we put him on a CGM, this was between 10th of July to 24th of July, you can see that the time in range is almost. 10, 5, 5, 10% because the median values are above normal. The normal is between 70 to 180. The intraday variability as given by the uh, 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 median shows a lot of variability. The interday variability as shown by the shaded areas again shows a lot of variability. And this opened his eyes and he allowed us to put him on basal bolus insulin therapy. So you can see that the glucose management indicator is 12.4% and the daily average is uh, 3.08 and the time and range is really low for this patient. Now this is soon after starting him on basal bolus therapy. You can see that his average glucose was 3.08 and uh, glucose management indicator was 12.4. 12.4, the GMI has come down to 9.8 and 300 plus has come to 235. Uh, this is just in a few weeks. And you can see the median uh, showing better control. It isn't good right now. But what it is, is that the time in range has certainly improved. But remember, he's injecting Glargine U100 at night. And the Glargine U100 at night is lasting till about lunchtime. And after that, the basal requirement is really going up. So if you go back and see this gentleman, the time in range has improved from 11% to 30%. The time below range has gone up, but not unacceptably. And the time above range has come down. This was his earlier CGM at the Chalaram Diabetes Hospital. And you can see that injecting the glargine at night, 200, 
means that its effect is tapering off by lunchtime the next day, which means that you've got to inject plagin twice a day if you want to control the blood sugar better, or you have to inject Blargene U300, or you have to inject Denudec for better 24-hour control. So this would help him in future. There's nothing wrong with HPA1C, but HPA1C is like a teacher who sees people talking in the class, but really doesn't see the student who's sleeping in the class. So HPA1C is like a teacher who detects hyperglycemia, but never detects hypoglycemia. And you can see that both these patients have the same HPA1C, but the patient on top has got lots of hypoglycemias. Now, this is a paper we published just a few months back, which looked at timing range in people with diabetic retinopathy and without diabetic retinopathy. What you will see that is that the timing range is higher in people without retinopathy and lower in people with retinopathy. The time below range is more or less the same. The time above range is higher in people with diabetic retinopathy showing you that a low time in range correlated with more diabetic retinopathy. This wasn't statistically significant because of the small sample size. But let me point out is that even with this small sample size of about 37, 37 people, the HbA1c still turned out to be statistically significant. In other words, my belief is that the HbA1c is a stronger determinant of diabetic complications than is time and range. This is not to say the time and range isn't a good marker. It is a good marker. This is just a pilot hypothesis generating study just to show that uh, time and range is lower in people with retinopathy. We also found that it was difficult to reach time and range targets in people with retinopathy who were more than 65 years old. And when you look at such people who are 65, 70, 75, this is a gentleman, and this is my last few slides, a 75-year-old gentleman who's been on CGM for, for years now. And you can see that his time in range is very good. You don't even have to look at the time in range. You can see it's almost a straight line, but you can see there is hypoglycemia. His Glucose management indicator is 5.6. His daily average is 114. This slide of good glucose control doesn't make me feel very happy at all. In, fe in fact, it makes me feel very worried because the timing range on some of the days is 60%, which is okay for this gentleman. But the time below range on some days is 40%. Some days it is even 65% suggesting that this is a case where if you had not done a CGM, if you had not quantified time and range, if you had not quantified time below range, you would have missed the hypoglycemia because it's quite asymptomatic in this elderly gentleman with long-standing diabetes. And this is a case for de-prescribing and de-intensifying therapy. Technology is not without its problem. I have at least Lots of patients on uh, the so-called artificial pancreas 780G, but it's out of reach for most Indians. It's very expensive, the 780G. And, and second is, as I mentioned, the data of time and range with complications is uh, not there completely to say at best. So uh, I think uh, uh, we need to debate this further. The device is imperfect. There is device failure. There are a lot of alarms and alarms lead to alarm fatigue. And patients are now complaining that too many alarms is actually distracting them, making them anxious. So you're required to reduce the number of alarms. And all this technology is making us a little glucocentric, making us forget that diabetes is a disease of obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, cardiovascular disease, good medical management of infections, management of NAFLD, and all that is being drowned in the sea of glycemic variability and this attempt to be glucocentric. Having said that, technology is likely to get better with time and we are likely to take care of our patients 
better with time. So CGM helps us to analyze patterns, predict variability, predict hypoglycemia, a timing range of 70% uh, uh, for values between 70 to 80 is a desirable goal. And we might in future get affordably excellent devices. Devices which are affordable at the same time, devices which are excellent. With that hope, let me end my talk and once again, thank Dr. Mayur Agrawal for inviting me to speak.